Hey, what's up everybody? Chris from Full Steam Designs. Uh, today I just wanted to do a quick follow-up video to one that I did about a week ago where I showed how to import one of these uh, 3D PNG depth maps. And today we are going to go over how to generate tool paths. So I've already gone ahead and brought my image in and I'll go ahead and put a link in the description for anybody that might have missed that last video. But here's my stock setup that I'm using with this one. And I'm using three quarter inch thick wood here. So we'll go ahead and click OK. And the only extra thing that I did here was draw this rectangle around it. And then what I did was I went to model and I made two components. So the first component is just this rectangle, which I just extruded to a quarter of an inch. And then the second one is the actual grayscale PNG that I imported. And I brought that up to 0.45 inch. So now if we look at the 3D, you can see we've got that quarter inch base. And then this here, the highest point in it, which is probably somewhere in the middle here, is 0.45 inches. So it's going to be just slightly lower than our three quarter inch stock that we're using. So now we can go over to the toolpath tab. And now all we have to do is select this rectangle. And then we can go ahead and click on 3D rough. And I usually just like using a regular end mill for this. For this one, I'll use the just quarter inch two flute, which is kind of like a 201 bit that I use. And I have my feed rate set to 100 and my plunge to 80. And that's what I normally run on 2D tool paths. And even for these 3D ones, I find that they're pretty good for that. Uh, my depth per pass is set to 0 0.05 inch. And we can go ahead and select OK. And we have this option here for stock to leave. So the default is 0 0.01 inch. And that's fine for this. So we'll just go ahead and click OK. Now this is going to take a little while to generate. All right, now let's go ahead and look at the simulation for that. So you can see it's kind of like a topographic map and it's just started roughing it out and there's still a lot left to be machined, but that removed a good portion of the material, especially in these low areas here. So now we'll hide the simulation. And now again, we've got this outside rectangle selected. We'll just click on 3D finish. And for this, I like to use a ball mill. Uh, we'll go ahead and select 1 16th inch. And there's a lot of different options that you can change here if you need to. Uh, finish allowance, the step over. Usually a step over of 10% of your bit diameter is pretty good for 3D finish. Um, if you're not getting the desired finish, you may need to lower that, but just keep in mind that if you do that, that's going to increase your run times. So the setup that I've got for this looks pretty good. I am going to adjust the feed rate, but we can do this over here. And again, I'm gonna put that up to 100, and for plunge, we'll do 60. You can change the angle here if you like, but I find it's best to run in the grain direction that I'm cutting in. Otherwise, it seems to get really fuzzy and I don't get that good of a finish. So we'll go ahead and click OK. And again, this is going to take some time to generate. And sometimes I've noticed that it doesn't ever completely generate. It just stays at 50% and I have to go back and forth between like the design tab and the tool path and click on show simulation a couple times. I'm not sure if this is just something I'm suffering from. I'm working on a Mac, um, but you can see it did generate that whole tool path. And now it's finally finished calculating our time here. So for the 3D rough, we've got about 54 minutes. And then for that finish pass, we've got about two hours and 46 minutes. And that looks pretty good. If we weren't getting the detail that we liked, we could go ahead and change that to like a 1 32nd inch bit. Um, but I'm pretty happy with that, so we'll just leave it at the 1 16th. So now all that's left to do is just to export our tool paths. 
And again, like normal, we'll save those as two separate ones. We'll save our 3D rough and then our finish as a separate toolpath because they're two different bits. And what I normally do is while it's running, I'll just keep an eye on it. And you can adjust your feed rate in carbide motion. And if you're noticing that it's going really slow or that it just seems like it's running pretty good, I like to bump it up. Sometimes I'll even go all the way up to 200%. You just really got to see how it's running and it's all going to depend on the bits you're using, the material you're using, and how you had the bits themselves set up. And that's all I've got for today. If you guys have any questions or anything, please leave a comment down below. I always try to respond to you guys. And I love seeing what you guys are working on. So if you actually make one of these things, please tag me on either Instagram or Facebook. And I'll put my links down below for those also. Everybody stay safe and I'll see you over on this next video.